Hello and welcome to another TLDR News EU video. Switzerland is in a truly unique position in Europe. As we've covered time and time again, Switzerland isn't a member of the European Union, nor the European Economic Area, yet it enjoys much of the same benefits, free movement and access to the European single market with Switzerland's relationship with the EU delicately built on a set of complex bilateral agreements. Agreements which may be about to come crashing down. So, in this video, we'll take a look at exactly what's happening and why Switzerland's position in Europe was, briefly, on a knife edge. Before we answer that though, a quick shout out to everyone who's backing us on Patreon. These backers help us make more content across the TLDR network and support the work we're doing. In return, they get bonus perks like exclusive live events, behind the scenes posts, early access to video merch discounts, exclusive merch items, and their names mentioned in videos. Find out what you can get over on our Patreon page. It's linked below. Okay, so back to the video. This all boils down to freedom of movement. While Switzerland is not a member of the European Union, on the 21st of June 1999, the EU and Switzerland signed the Agreement on the Free Movement of Persons, or AFMP. AFMP lifted restrictions on EU citizens wishing to live or work in Switzerland, and vice versa. With the mutual recognition of professional qualifications and the coordination of social insurance systems truly giving Swiss nationals and EU nationals alike the right and ability to live and work where they choose to in the EU. So far, so good. The issue being that, recently, the issue of free movement has come to the fore of discussion. The right-wing Swiss People's Party, or SVP, the largest party in the National Council, launched a major campaign against what it calls uncontrolled immigration early in January this year, ahead of a referendum on free movement originally scheduled for May. SVP argued that Switzerland is a small country. More and more people cannot force their way into a small country. But this is exactly what has happened since 2007, since the introduction of free movement of persons with the EU. We have opened our borders to more than 450 million people from the EU without being able to control how many would come to Switzerland. Going on to list a number of events that would follow a yes vote, ranging from ensuring that cheap EU foreigners no longer replace Swiss workers and protecting social services, from looting, to stopping the concreting of Switzerland and making housing cheaper again. At the time, polling was strongly against the proposal. A Tamedia online survey of 11,000 people across Switzerland found that 58% were against the idea, just 35% approved, and 7% had no opinion. More recently, polling indicated that the opposition has risen further, with 65% of Swiss voters opposed to the initiative. Given the pandemic, the referendum invariably couldn't be held on the original schedule and was pushed back. And so, on Sunday the 27th of September, the Swiss electorate finally voted on the popular initiative entitled For Moderate Immigration, in brackets, Limited Initiative. The initiative aimed to end the free movement of persons with the EU, with a positive vote forcing the Swiss Federal Council to negotiate termination of the agreement on the free movements of persons within 12 months. And, if negotiations were to fail, the Federal Council would be required to unilaterally terminate the agreement within further 30 days. The initiative would have also explicitly prohibited Switzerland from entering into any new international agreement or obligations that would grant freedom of movement to foreign citizens. Exit projections by broadcaster SRF showed that Switzerland's emphatically rejected the initiative. The projection, based on partial results, put support at 37%, with 63% rejecting. Whether you agree with free movement of persons or not, this referendum extended far, far beyond who controls Switzerland's borders. The issue being just how complex and unique Switzerland's position in the EU is. Freedom of movement is a cornerstone of Swiss society. When Switzerland signed the agreement on the free movement of persons, it did so as a package of agreements known as Bilaterals 1, which included the likes of agreements on civil aviation, public prosecution and barriers to trade. Bilaterals 1 was negotiated with the EU on the condition that negotiations were conducted in parallel and that agreements be signed and take effect together. 
This parallelism of negotiations was driven by the view on the EU side that the different and distinct agreements would only be in the best interest of both partners if they were adopted together. In turn, a guillotine clause was included in the package, explicitly stating that either all agreements apply or none do. As the Swiss Confederation's website highlights, if one of the agreements were terminated, the others would also cease to have effect. The EU could also then decide to cancel any of the other bilateral treaties and agreements relating to the likes of Schengen, Dublin or Erasmus+. So, if Switzerland were to terminate the agreement on free movement, it would also terminate the remaining bilateral agreements, risking Switzerland's access to the European single market, and basically uprooting Switzerland's position in Europe entirely. At a time when the EU and Switzerland are negotiating an institutional framework agreement that would tidy up existing arrangements, something we covered in our deals video on Switzerland, such a move would be significant to say the least. Although this is far from completely unexpected, back in 2014 a similar initiative, again backed by the SVP, demanded that Switzerland impose quotas on migration from the EU. The vote narrowly passed with 50.3% of voters backing the initiative, leading to some substantial backlash from the EU. In immediate retaliation, the European Commission suspended Switzerland's participation in the EU research and student programmes Horizon 2020 and Erasmus+, with the then Vice President of the European Commission telling the Financial Times, we respect the democratic vote of the Swiss people. The four fundamental freedoms, free movement of people, goods, capital and services, are not separate. The single market is not a Swiss cheese. You cannot have a single market with holes in it. All in all, this led to a scramble between the EU and Switzerland to find a way through the crisis and to ensure that the popular vote was respected but that free movement continued. In the end, the Swiss Parliament adopted a bill giving priority to Swiss job seekers but avoided full-on quotas, setting the stage for the SVP support and backing of this more explicit vote which condemned the compromise as a betrayal and capitulated by the EU. Switzerland's justice minister was quick to highlight just how uprooting a vote to abandon free movement would have been, stating that it would create a situation worse than Brexit. Following the result, Ursula von der Leyen, president of the European Commission, was quick to publish a statement highlighting the gravity of the situation. Switzerland and the European Union are more than just neighbours. The citizens of Switzerland have shown today that they value these ties. Their vote upholds one of the core pillars of our relationship, the mutual freedom to move, to live and to work in Switzerland and the European Union. I welcome this outcome. I see it as a positive signal to continue to consolidate and deepen our relationship. So, what do you think? Is the result a new impetus for Switzerland to solidify its relationship with the EU? Or is the nearly third of people voting to reject freedom of movement a sign of bubbling discontent that needs to be addressed before it explodes into the open? Let us know in the comments below. As always, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified whenever we post new videos. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos just like this one possible. And if you want to see your name listed at the end of videos just like these people, then be sure to back us on Patreon. There's a link to that in the description.